Hi, I'm Still Midnight Mule and this is Still Midnight Mule FPL. This is the video of the week where I get to look at my team, so it's very self-indulgent. Now I'm aware when this finally gets published, probably no one's going to watch it to start with because you should all be looking at the, uh, the mainstream FPLers giving you their advice and what they think about things. Maybe one day I'll get around to live streaming, but I've got a lot of things I need to set up first. But if I do live stream, at least because I'll have fewer followers, I should be able to respond to all the questions and I won't need to charge you for them either. <laughs> anyway, my team, how did I get on and what are my plans? Let's have a look. So game week five, game week five was quite high scoring for a lot of managers and I was doing quite well until Salah got an assist right near the end of his game, at the very end of his game, because quite a few managers near me in the uh, in the rankings had him as captain, so that was a jump of quite a few points. However, I, I did okay, I pretty much stood still. So in goal I had Edison for six, in defence I had Perisic for one, I also had James, but he didn't play so he got subbed off. I had Trent and Robertson who got two each, and I got Cancelo for 12. Middle of the park I had Martinelli 10, Odegaard 1. That was a bit annoying. I brought in Odegaard for Saka because I'd already lost 0.1 on Saka and he was going to go down again. So in the video I said when I did the switch I would rather keep Saka because I think Saka's a better player. And indeed Saka got I think five points again. And now Odegaard, <laughs> Odegaard went off with a knock. But there you go. It's Early on in the game you have to try and get the balance right between the money and the points. And I tend to favour the money at the cost of the points. And then after about Christmas I go a lot more on the points and less the money. Uh, and Luis Diaz got two. Up front, Tony, who came off the bench, got one. Haaland got 34 because he was captain. Look at that. Captain. There we go. If I ever lose this hat, I'm going to be in trouble. I'll lose all my subscribers. And uh, Jesus got six. Oh, look at that. I'm a bit creased. Oh, I don't know. Right, so... That's how I did. So I lost out because some people have Salah and as captain. The other thing is a lot of people had Andreas on their bench and he came on for six points. But my bench is, I believe, stronger than most people and anyone would have had Tony before Andreas and Tony only got one point. On my bench, I did have also De Silva and Lavia. Now, I've talked about Lavia before. I think he's a really excellent player. He got a goal but then he went off injured and he's now going to be out for a month or so. So that's a shame because uh, he's, like I said, I think he's a good player. So there's a reasonable chance in the next month I may get round to moving him on for a while, but I'll see about that. So I got 77 points in the end, which is around the 2 million game week rank. Overall, I'm just outside the 600,000 mark and we've we've got over 10 million players now already, which is very good. So that's exciting. Uh, so yeah, so I, I pretty much stood still, I think. So my transfers, so I had Darwin right from the start and then in game week two, he got sent off. So my transfer for game week three was I got rid of Darwin, swapped him for Tony and I also played my wildcard that week, did a few bits of jiggery pokery and I swapped one of my minor midfielders for Luis Diaz because I had to spare Liverpool's slot. And that was a fortunate move because Luis Diaz has done all right since then. And because I played my wild card in, in game week three, when Robertson went down by 0.1 million, I didn't lose it because I could see he was going down. So I sold him at the beginning of the week when he was at seven. And I bought him back at the end of the week when he was 6.9. So game week six, Nunes is back. I obviously want Nunes. So I have to get rid of one of my Liverpool boys and Robertson is the obvious choice. Luis Diaz is doing well and I'd rather have Trent to Robertson. Robertson seems to be getting subbed every game. Obviously Tony's out. I only got him in as a placeholder for Nunes and I never started Tony anyway. I bought Tony for 7. He went up to 7.2 so I could sell him for 7.1. Both Tony and Robertson I think have gone down this week but I did this transfer before they went down. So the question was, which defender to bring in for Robertson? Now, whoever I bring in is going to be a bench sitter because I've got my team set. So my thoughts were Dallow at 4.4 for Man United because I think they're going to start keeping clean sheets more than they used to. And at 4.4, I think he's probably going to always start 
I think he's all right. He's good attacking returns. There's the choice of a Brighton defender. There's a couple I could choose from. The disadvantage of those is they're not as good as if I could get a player from one of the very good teams. And in the end, I went for Fafana from Chelsea. He's only 4.4 million. He should be first choice once he gets his feet under the table. So maybe not this week, he may not get 90 minutes. But once he does, he's a 4.4 always starter defender for a major club. And I think when Chelsea play him, they should start to get more clean points. So you can kind of compare him to Mendy. Mendy, the goalie, 5 million, Fafana 4.4. Fafana's probably not going to get any attacking returns, but he get the clean sheets and he's just for sitting on my bench. So Robertson, Tony out, Fafana, Darwin in. And that did free up a bit of cash as well. So this is how my team looked after I made these transfers. This is my setup going into game week six. Have Edison in goal and in the back, Trent, James, Cantelo and Perisic. Middle of the park, Martinelli, Luis Diaz, Odegaard. And up front, Darwin, Haaland and Jesus. But as of the middle of the week, around Wednesday, I think it was when I was doing all the shenanigans, there was doubt about if James was going to play the weekend. All we knew was he didn't travel to Southampton because he had some sort of virus. And so I could be a player down there. The chatter was Perisic's going to get rested. It's They're only playing Fulham. Sorry to any Fulham fans. They're just playing Fulham. They've got a big, big midweek game against a European side. So he was expected to get rested. Odegaard went off injured. And so he might be missing. The sites I was looking at that make predictions who's going to start, none of them had Darwin starting. He would obviously come on at some point, you'd have thought, but he may just come on and do nothing. Plus, he's at Goodison Park, and the Everton crowd and the players will be very, very noisy because it's Liverpool. And because they know Darwin got sent off a red card, I think they're going to be really trying to get Darwin to get booked more than normal, a player. And Haaland, again... There's a lot of talk about him getting benched. So as of the midweek, I had six of my starting 11 were looking like potential bench options. I mean, potentially wouldn't be playing. On top of that, for my bench, Fafana, nobody had Fafana starting, even though he'd moved on. And of course, Lavia is out. So I was in real trouble, and I potentially still am in real trouble. So I was considering, and I've not completely ruled it out, doing another transfer where I move Lavia on now for a minus four. And then my choice would be either Gross from Brighton, who's good in the immediate future, Rashford, who would be good, quite good long term. Um, Neto's good for this week, but after this week, he's got a bit of a bad run in. So there's two or three I was looking at. The most likely one, the most likely one would be Rashford. I think he'd be the better points long term. But a lot of people around me have growth. So if I get him, at least I'm, if he does well, I don't fall behind because of it. But currently I'm sticking with what I've got because now it looks like James will start. Conte's press remarks were implying he's going to play his best team, which means Perisic's going to start. Odegaard is still a bit doubtful. And if he doesn't start, then I have got one or two on the bench because I think Darwin is going to play. Probably not 90 minutes, but I'd expect him to get at least 30, maybe 60. Haaland, I've got my captain's hat on him. Obviously, I'm hoping he'll play. If they don't start him and they win, they're win, they winning 3-0 by half time, he probably won't come on. So realistically, I may be able to get away with two on my bench. And now the chatter online is for Farnet. People tend to think he is going to start. So that's one of my bench boys coming in. And De Silva, although he tends not to play the entire match, he does tend to come on. So I'm probably going to take the risk of not taking a minus four and hoping I've got enough coverage with my squad. Um, I I may regret that. But if my thinking is if I paid a minus four, I may well bench the person I got on. If I got in Rashford, maybe I'd play him, put Odegaard on the bench. But... Is Rashford going to get four points more than Odegaard if Odegaard plays? I'm thinking the chances aren't high enough to warrant me doing it. So there we have it. That is how I did in game week five. And that's my current plan for game week six. I think it's unlikely I'm going to make another sub. 
If I see some late breaking news shortly before 11, then I'll probably bring Rashford in. But I would rather not spend the four points at this point in time. All right, I hope that was useful. I'm aware it's possible no one watches this until maybe Saturday afternoon or Sunday when there's nothing else much to watch from FPLers online. So by then you'll know if my team was a disaster or if it did all right. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.